this is going to be an experiment using Alclad's aluminium paints for a natural metal finish. This is uh, Revell's 172, their ancient um, kit of the SR71 that's been primed overall in grey stone res and a few other things which I'll explain in a minute. So this is going to be a three part experiment where I'm going to try to emulate a worn oxidised variable uh, natural metal finish. I'm not going after a highly reflective um, polished aluminium look. I'm going for a in-service worn weathered um, natural metal finish. And that's for my 132nd scale Spitfire. So um, what I've done, we're going to do, I'm going to do three experiments, okay? The first part, which is going to be the nose here, is um, using some primer and then straight to seven different types of uh, alclad aluminiums. Okay, so the primers would be the, the grey Steinol Res, the chrome for a highly reflective silver finish. Let's see if I can get that to reflect a little bit. Okay, there you go. And the last one is black, that's Tamiya X1, a gloss black. Because the, the normal uh, rule of thumb with applying alclads is you have to do them over a, a gloss black surface because that gives you that reflective um, part of the metal. So that's what I'll do first. It's been primed and then across each of these seven sections as you can see here, okay, I'll do a different series of aluminiums. There's seven types here. The second stage, part B, is using the same primer, the same uh, aluminiums, but what I've done differently is this is a, an idea I got from Matt McDougall from Doug's Models where you put in a marble coat of a very dark, it's not, it's not quite black, it's actually a very dark blue grey mix. And what that's supposed to do, and as he showed in his video, is that brings a little bit of, of variable, you know, uh, variation to the surface apart from just going from a straight primer, just like we do with black basing with our normal base coats. So again, we've got seven sections there, one for each type of metal, and we'll compare the both at the, um, at the end of both of those experiments. Part C is where I will use these after I document them to see how it goes, is I'll use them again and I'm going to do different uh, washes. I'm going to use uh, a dark wash, just an enamel based wash to see if that does anything both within panel lines and also in terms of streaking and that sort of effects. I'm going to use some ink washes. Okay, that's a black one. I've got a brown one as well. And then the other thing I'm going to try is some dry brushing uh, to get a little bit of this sort of stuff. This is um, titanium silver and titanium gold. I'm going to give this a go. They've got they've got a sort of a fleck to them that that might bring back some um, reflectivity and a little bit of that sort of somewhat gold oxidized sort of look that you get with some aluminium looks. Anyway, let's see what happens. And um, all right, I've put down the uh, seven aluminiums and what we have here on the front, the nose, uh, just the the seven aluminiums straight on the three different primers. Remember the primers run this way. So we've got grey primer, in the middle is Mr. Metallic Chrome, and here is a nice polished Tamiya X1 gloss black. <clears throat> Repeated the same sequence, you can see I've marked them here on the, on the rear, uh, but we've done the modelling effect, so let's see if you can actually see that in the, in the camera with all the lights on. You can probably see a little bit of the of the variation. I'll just do a little close up and then I'll... So let's just put that down and we'll go through this step by step. I'll just have my time here. So first of all, when we're talking about comparing primers, okay, now I haven't polished uh, or, or done anything to the to the kit. It's got raised panel lines too, if you can probably hear that. That's just straight grey uh, Steiner res, which lays down nicely. It's a nice satin effect. It's not polished, okay. But if we want to compare the three, just on an overall effect of the seven aluminiums. Uh, the grey Steiner res versus using the chrome in the middle there, the chrome obviously gives you a deeper luster to the paint because it's already metal, okay? You are laying down a metal metal paint. Uh, I'll get that thing out for here. It is. It's Mr. Metal Color Chrome Silver, okay? So in that respect, if you want a deeper paint job, obviously go for that sort of metallic effect. When you're talking about the grey versus the, the Tamiya black, um, again, I shouldn't probably show the, try to show this on camera like this, but it's fairly obvious that the, the, um, 
the gloss black is much more reflective. I mean, that's the cornerstone of doing, of doing alclads or natural metal finish. You need to have a, a glossy un undercoat. But when we're talking about the chrome versus the black, there's really nothing much in it. Um, I, couldn't, I can't really tell that much, you know, using my Mark I eyeball. So, you know, there is, there is that option. If you haven't got a, a, um, you know, a, a polished surface and you're putting down this, this Mr. Metal color, which is, is actually buffable, okay, uh, it, it's used to great effect, there's an option for you, okay, instead of going to a, a gloss black. Now, moving on to this part, I'll just zoom in a little bit here because we'll talk to this for most of the rest of this part of the video. Excuse my terrible writing. So, <clears throat> when we're comparing the primers on the actual effects, what's the better primer to use um, to try to get these effects, regardless of trying to get a reflective, you know, a multi-reflective surface? So when we're talking about the grey versus the chrome, so the grey is this top series of seven cells here, and the chrome's the middle, okay? Um, there really isn't much in it, and you can probably see that on the on the airframe one particularly. You can see a lot of it there, and on the dark, there's, there's a fair bit there. It's quite stark compared to the black. The gloss black, apart from on the polished bit there, which I'll explain later, really doesn't work well trying to get this, this marbling effect. So there's a choice between the two there, okay? Um, yeah, the, when we're talking grey versus black, it shows up better on the grey. When we're talking chrome versus black, it's harder to control on the black. Now, if you're going to go for a, a, a relatively polished, really nice reflective natural metal finish, but you want to have a little bit of weathering, go with a gloss black, and then when you're doing your marbling, do extremely fine lines, and you still can get, you probably just see a little bit there, you can still get a small subtle effect without it, it looking like a highly polished die cast thing. But for my mind, we're going to get rid of the, um, the gloss black. Uh, for trying to do these effects and we'll concentrate on on these two now let's talk about the seven types of aluminium okay because I want to talk about what they actually look like so if you if you're after a particular sort of tone okay the um, the first one airframe it's got a deep tone it's got an almost I'll go back to this one it's got an almost gold sort of look to it all right with the dark gray it's almost a, gl a gloss gray effect it is dark as it says the dull is really, it looks like a, a something that's been cast out of aluminium, like a, a, a landing strut or something like that. Not good for skin effects unless you're after a sort of a frosted look here and there. Durolinium is quite bright, as you can see, you can, I can see that on the camera. Polished is polished, it's even brighter. Huzzah. semi matte is as described. This would actually be better than dull for using a, a frosted type effect. And then white at the back. Is white. It's uh, not quite that sort of gold, a little bit deeper color of airframe, and it's a good. I think white's a good mix to um, to to sort of mix these three main ones up: the drill in him, the dark, and the airframe. When we're talking about marbling, however, there's different ways the the metal sort of um, the different choices reacted to the marbling. The marbling, if you remember, it's all the same. I didn't I didn't do any variations in it, so I wanted to be have a control. But if we talk from left to right, with airframe, you're going to get a strong effect with marbling, okay? Um, it, it actually does. Come on, try to capture it. Camera. Okay. You can probably see it there. Oh, I can see it. <laughs> okay. Airframe and dark seem to be able to, seem to capture that black marbling underneath. Can you see that? All right, and I'll just switch to their original ones. See the difference? That's airframe, and that's dark, and that's the same ones with marbling. Okay. So airframe has a strong effect, dark has a subtle effect. Uh, dull, the effect is lost, or just just gone uh, entirely. Uh, Durolinium was a very subtle effect. Okay, you can barely see it. It's it's there, but it's it's barely there and uh, polished, very stark. You can, you can actually see it even across the, um, the gloss black. Can you see that? See how it's, po it's, it's showing up? Okay. So it really does mar any sort of polished surface that you're trying to do. Semi-matte, again, it loses most of the effect. And white, I should have done this on a bigger area, but on the, um, on the nose there, there is, there is quite a bit there. So it does, it does show up very nicely 
on the white. Alright, so that stage of the experiment's over. Where would I, without going any further, where would I apply these and which ones would I recommend? Well, let's eliminate three completely. We'll eliminate the dull and the semi matte because they're just not what we're after for any sort of really aircraft skin effect. Okay? I would then eliminate polished aluminium unless you're specifically going for like a 1950s style highly polished um, you know, F86 or one of those sort of types. But for what I'm after, which is a World War II, um, just stripped back to bare metal, nothing else has been done to it, uh, sort of effect. So it hasn't been painted with lacquer paints or anything like that, like a Mustang is. Um, so this is really applies to a Mustang's fuselage, for example. So that's what I would do. So we're only talking about uh, the four remaining uh, types, airframe dark, drillinium and white. For the airframe, I think this works well in the wing roots and anywhere that's got a lot of high wear because then you can put in the subtle variations of it to, to put down, um, you know, basically wear and tear, the pilot and the crew walking over the, the wings, the wing root, or the, uh, the ground crew taking the engine panels off and, you know, getting grime or the machine gun panels, that sort of stuff. So that's, that's a good one. For dark, I would use that sparingly because the difference between the other metals is, is quite stark. Because it's dark, haha. <laughs> so I would actually consider using it as a mix. Um, and I would use a chrome primer when you're using dark. Again, to just to bring up, just to make it not so stark between the panels. You don't want a quilted look unless you're going after that sort of um, look. With the drillinium, I would use that anywhere. Okay, that's a really, really good base. And because you get very subtle effects out of it, you could, um, you know, paint the whole, uh, marble the whole aircraft and then do most of it in drillinium and you would still get that little, that natural look, but you still have little subtleties here and there. And with the white, I think the white is perfect for doing uh, highlights. So tops of, top of the wings, top of the fuselage spine, the rudder, that sort of thing, or mixing with other types, uh, with the airframe and the drillinium, um, to get that sort of brighter effect there. So the last stage of the experiment is testing different after effects after we put down the the, uh, the base metal and also if we do some marbling like so on this side. So what I've tried here and uh, it failed straight away I tried on this side I tried some ink washes so you can see the, the stripes there okay. The ink I used which is um, there's nothing wrong with it it's you know Vallejo game ink I've used it before it's great for Bandai kits because they don't take enamel washes very well I just put it down too strong I, I didn't realize I started here and then I put this down and I came back to this one and realized oh too late but um yes that one needs to be heavily diluted um, I, I came across that tip before and I didn't didn't take heed of it but it really needs a heavy dilution and probably sprayed actually instead of just brushed on so um yeah I'll strike that one off the list putting it down um, straight, okay. The uh, the next thing you can see there is uh, those yellow streaks. I'll just bring that up a little bit. See the streaks on each on each one that's sort of feathered in. That's Tamiya uh, clear orange and yellow, which um, you know it's. I think it's a really good effect for heat effect, perhaps on exhaust and so forth. That's going to be another experiment I do on burnt iron and and the rest. You can see I've got a little bit here as well. So that works okay. That's heavily diluted. Um, the next one was using this Tamiya's, I've only just recently got these, these titanium gold and silver, okay, there you go. Um, they're very interesting paint, the, the, the metal flake in it is, is too big, just like on their XF-16, so I wasn't expecting much and I, um, I tried spraying and I, I sprayed some on this, um, this rear elevator here and, um, can't really see the effect too well. You probably can there. You probably just see the. It's uh yeah. It's a little bit too flaky. So it might do well for like a replicating a doped surface, uh, which I have to do for the Spitfire. It's going to have doped um, fabric on its uh, ailerons and and elevator and rudder. Um, but where I found it worked really really well, and I'm really happy with it. And it's going to be hard to get this on the camera, but on this side at the front here, which um it's also had an enamel wash, and I'll talk about that in a minute too reflective. Let's get that light out of the way. I don't think it's going to see. No, you're not. What it does is dry brushing it, I found was okay, but then I got out my um, my wispy uh, fan type. See these ones? Brushes. 
which I use for streaking. And with just a thin with a little bit of lacquer thinner, it actually comes up really nicely as a burnishing uh, effect or a scratch effect. Now, if I flip this over on the top there, again, it's going to be really hard to see that. But I've done um, vertical stripes up and down there. Okay. Go away, light, or do I need the light? Okay. You can barely see the stripes there. Um, might be able to see it there. But to the naked eye, it looks it looks really really good. It looks like burnished metal. Um, it's quite uniform doing it that way. So that's that's an effect I really really like, and uh, I might use that for some vertical surfaces. Now on the front, sorry for flicking this around so much. On the front, I just used uh, a simple uh, dark wash. Okay, didn't thin it or anything. Probably could stand to be th to be thinned somewhat, and applied that over the whole. The whole area. This doesn't have panel lines, unfortunately. It's all it's all raised, so it didn't go into the panel lines. But you can. Well, it did here, obviously, on the nose gear. So, for a panel line wash, nothing wrong with enamels. Works really, really well. And also for some streaking, you can see I've got some pretty good streaking effects happening there. Uh, I didn't apply the enamels on on this end. So, yeah, that's a thumbs up for the for the enamels for um for that sort of effect. Overlaid on this half, as you can see, it's quite darker especially here at the front, as I've done Tamiya Smoke, okay? So here, the, in here you can see, and at the front of the airframe, this is airframe aluminium, really good for smoke and shadow type effects, okay? Uh, yeah, and I think that's about it really. I've, well, I'll leave the experiment there because you can go too much into it, but I think I've got out of it what I need to, plus a few other surprises, and I'll show you a little surprise here. This is um, the little drone that they, they give you that sits on top of the thing. Now this is painted in the, um, it's not quite black is it? Okay, it's painted in the mix that I use to do the marble coat on the back here. And it's come up wonderful. It's it's so dark, it's blue believe it or not, but it's so dark that it tricks your mind into thinking hey that's black when it actually it isn't. And I'm going to use this for, you could almost use it for Panzer Grey because Panzer Grey is bloody dark. Um, or you can use this for like an F117 or for a black Tomcat, for example. Any sort of um, aircraft that you want to paint black, like an SR71, and in fact it would work quite well for this, but you don't want to be the whole thing black. And then you just do variations on a theme on this colour. Uh, that was basically just, you can almost see it on the bottom, I did it a bit heavier. It's been marbled, just as normal for black basing, but on a grey. So that's how you do um, how to paint black using black basing. You use a grey primer and then an almost black undercoat and that almost black top. So anyway, a couple of ex surprising um, things that happen out of this, like what to use for to replicate um, the, the RAF dope sort of material, and, um, and yeah, how to get some really good effects on worn material, on worn aluminium. See, as I said at the start, I'm not going for a highly polished reflective surface. I'm going for something that's worn, busted, beaten up, um, but still in use because I don't do abandoned aircraft because that's just wrong. <laughs> no it isn't. Whatever. Do what you want. Alright, I'll leave it at that. I'm waffling now. So um yeah. Thanks very much.